Hello and welcome back to my channel. Jacob here, and who are you talking about? Drakenfells. 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 Let's go with Drakenfells by Kim Newman, who wrote this book as Jack uh, Uville. Yeovile. Let's go with that as well. And Drakenfells is a Vampire Genevieve novel. Now, if you've seen my review of Castle Blood, this is also part of the Warhammer horror line. You can tell by these beautiful red pages are drawn with the books. And once again, beautiful covers. Um, I do own, I'm pretty sure, the entire line that I will get around to talking about at some point, hopefully. Um, I actually, I, uh, I absolutely love the Vampire Genevieve novel, if I can talk, or the Vampire Genevieve series. Even though it is very different from a lot of Warhammer fantasy that I've read, um, once again, this is a republication of an older series that came out. I don't know the exact timeline. The first Vampire Genevieve novels came out. Um, yeah, they don't have it in here. I should have done a little more research on that, but I do know, like I said, that they were published at an earlier date. So it's very much a different uh, Warhammer Fantasy universe than I am used to. This is, of course, set in the old world. This is not the same Warhammer Fantasy universe that Castle of Blood was set in by C.L. Werner. Um, and this is actually much different, I would say, to even, um, you know, the Warhammer Fantasy universe, even though it is the same universe as something like Go uh, Gortrek and Felix. Um, mostly because everyone knows Genevieve is a vampire. And everyone seems to be cool with that, and that is including, like, Imperials, uh, or, I mean, subjects of the Emperor, Empire, which we know likes to burn anything, <laughs> you know, undead, or anything that could be seen as um, using the powers of chaos or ruinous magics. Which I think vampires and their like would fall under that. But everyone seems super cool that Genevieve is a vampire and that she is a helpful vampire. So that is a big difference, I think, uh, when you read... Because when you read like the Gortrek, uh, Gortrek and Felix series, a lot of people don't really know about vampires in the same way that a lot of people don't believe in Skaven. Um, and some of the other monsters that exist within the Warhammer universe. Um, and the people that do know are usually government officials or members of certain religious orders, and they keep them, they keep the existence of these creatures and these evil societies very like closely guarded because they don't want people to be influenced by them. Uh, so it was very interesting to kind of see Genevieve walking around and, and uh, you know, being very much in the public eye and interacting with high up government officials. Now, this is where this book gets really fun, in my opinion, too, because the beginning of the book is very much uh, what I think of when I think of a Warhammer fantasy novel. It is about a group of which the vampire Genevieve is a part of, and so is one of the, I do believe it's the Emperor's Cousins, and they go and face off against the Great Enchanter, Drakenfels, because the Fortress of Drakenfels is named after the Sorcerer Drakenfels, who is very much a subject of ruinous powers and is a evil necromantic sorcerer who does all sort of sorts of evil stuff, much of which is much of which is described in great detail in the beginning of the book. But of course, our brave heroes, uh, while not all of them survive, the ones that do are able to overthrow them. And then, a year or so later, comes the great Detlef Sirik, the self-proclaimed greatest playwright in existence, who is going to write a play about, you know, this nobleman, and his party, including the vampire Genevieve, and how they overthrew this evil sorcerer. But of course, to do that, he also invites the surviving members of the party to come and join him in the very fortress that they overthrew this sorcerer on, so that they could, they can then make this play. 
um, which is really interesting. I mean, you, as someone who does really like uh, Warhammer fantasy novels, you know, uh, Felix Jaeger is a poet, so we do know that there are these uh, big centers of the arts in the old world. But I think it's really interesting to actually see them kind of be explored a bit. And also kind of to see them used as a main plot device I thought was very interesting. Usually Warhammer books, I mean Warhammer is a game about wars. It is a, you know, strategic board game essentially. It's a miniature war game with a bunch of miniatures that's playing on these giant massive scaled battles which is why most of the uh, fantasy book series within the universe just like the warhammer 40k universe revolve around wars so it is kind of interesting to see a uh, different approach being taken and i very much enjoyed that um i also enjoyed all of the characters in this all the characters very much don't play into the stereotypes as we would later, eh, as we later see within like Warhammer fantasy fiction, um, and that might be because the stereotypes didn't exist then. I very much get the feeling that when these books were originally written, uh, there was less was set in stone in the Warhammer fantasy universe, if that makes sense, because there are a lot of things that happen in this book, um, not only with the vampire Genevieve, but with others that you just don't see in other Warhammer fantasy novels, um, especially like the more modern ones. Because once again, we I think the world has been more ironed out and there are more rigid systems in the way that we, you know, know how things will play out. Um, so I thought that was a lot of fun, basically to see it on a different light. I like this book a whole lot. It is kind of a gothic vampire novel thrown in with basically a warhammer novel but it's also a mystery because you know of course once all these people get together people start to die and it's up to the vampire genevieve and the playwright to get to the bottom of these gruesome murders is it the sorcerer drakenfels back from the dead trying to kill them get revenge for you know sending him to whichever uh, Runus God he owned allegiance to? Or is it cultists? I mean, any of these are possibilities in the Warhammer universe. I mean, it could be anybody. So, I am not going to spoil it for you, but I do think it's really fun that there is so much going on in this book. I mean, you kind of get a bit of the behind-the-scenes politics of everybody. I mean, all the characters go into detail. And what I also like, especially, is the fact that it didn't shy away from showing just how destroyed most of the characters were after their uh, encounter with the Sorcerer of the First Garon. I mean, they saw real evil, real horror up close. And even though a lot of them, uh, Genevieve included, had killed and seen battle and done all these things before, seeing that type of, um, you know, just unfathomable evil and darkness up close kind of wrecked them all for a bit. Uh, and some of them very much still wrecked, uh, which I don't think it's talked about enough with these novels. I mean, we kind of see it sometimes with uh, Go Trek and Felix, and I do talk about that series a lot because it is my favorite Warhammer fantasy series, and I do know that the character of Go Trek is in the New World, so I do have to go and uh, read about him at some point. But yeah, if you like vampires and you like Warhammer fantasy and you want to read a more offbeat Warhammer fantasy novel or start a good Warhammer fantasy series, then I highly recommend picking up this book. I will, of course, link it in the show notes below. And if you've read this series or there are any other Warhammer fantasy series or even 40K series that you think I should read and talk about on this channel, please let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time.